In this video, we're going to pick back up on our practice problems for 1.2 on page 22 in our workbook. Number 9, I already have everything set up, so I'm going to read it to you, and then after I read the problem, go ahead and pause it and start setting up the work and listening to the explanation. The table shows the items in a family chicken taster meal at a restaurant. The restaurant wants to create a larger meal to accommodate larger groups of people. They also want to limit the number of chicken tenders to 15. The ratio remains the same. How many biscuits are in the larger meal? So the first thing we need to do is write our labels. That means we're going to kind of shorten these words over here and just abbreviate them. So we'll use CS for chicken sliders, CT for chicken tenders, B for biscuits, and S for for slaw because we can't have another CS in our ratio. Once we have those written, we're going to pull the numbers from the table. It says 4, 6, 8, and 1. So we write 4, 6, 8, and 1. Now what I want to look at is the chicken tenders. Right here I see there's 6 chicken tenders in the ratio. Can I go from 6 to 15? No, I can't. I can't just count by sixes to get to 15. So I might need to scale this down. I notice that four, six, and eight are even numbers. So I'm going to divide by two. Half of four is two. Half of six is three. Half of eight is four. Half of one is one half because two halves make a whole. And you need to make sure you're putting divide by two on the outside. Now that I have this smaller ratio, I'm going to see if I can use it to scale it up to make that larger meal. Can I go from 3 to 15? Yes, I can. That works. So 3 times 5 is 15. So I went ahead and multiplied the chicken sliders by 5. So there would be 10 chicken sliders to 15 chicken tenders to 20 biscuits and 2.5 pints of coleslaw. Now I've answered the question. How many biscuits would be in the larger meal? 20 in the large meal. Number 10 is identifying structure. We're going to do a few things with this one. Generate a ratio table with at least two ratios equivalent to $10 for 15 tickets. Then describe how the table shows an additive structure and multiplicative structure. So I went ahead and started setting up my table. I have cost and I have tickets. They told me it's $10 for 15 tickets. Now I haven't quite multiplied yet. I decided to first start with division, which is still using that rule. I said 5 goes into both 10 and 15. So for every 3 tickets, there it would be $2. 15 divided by 5 is 3, and 10 divided by 5 is 2. I could use that number to scale it up if I wanted to, and then just started counting by 2 to 3, and increasing my table that way. I just went ahead and started with a bigger number, and went right over here. 10 times 2 is 20, and 15 times 2 is 30. So for every 30 tickets, it's 20 bucks. Then I went ahead and scaled it up again. For every 45 tickets, it would be $30. So that would be three times. So I can show this increasing structure through both multiplication and addition. And let's write that out. We can say it's additive because the cost is oops, increasing by $10, adding 10 each time. So I can see 10 plus 10 is 20, 20 plus 10 is 30, and so there I'm adding 10 each time. I can also show adding at the bottom too. The tickets 
are going up by 15 each time. I can show that it's multiplicative like this. I'll write out multiplicative and then I will show it off to the side. I'm just going to kind of number those. I'm showing additive and then multiplicative. I can show that 10 times 2 is 20 and I can show that 10 times 3 is 30. And there's my multiplicative structure. Let's read number 11. Justify conclusions. There are 21 goats and 35 chickens on a farm. If five more goats and five more chickens are added, is the ratio of goats to chickens the same? Write an argument to defend your solution. Sometimes writing your argument is just showing your work. So let's show this. We have 21 goats, and that is being compared to 35 chickens. They're saying if five more goats, I'm going to show adding five, and five more chickens are added, is the ratio of goats to chickens the same? Okay, so here's our new ratio, 26 to 40. Well, let's see here. I know that 7 goes into both 21 and 35 if I want to scale it down. So I'm going to show that. Divide by 7. And that ratio is 3 to 5. If I can go from 3 to 5 in the same amount to get from 26 to 40, then I've maintained the ratio. I'm also going to show it as a bar model. I'm going to draw three bars, and those are my goats. I'm going to put my 7 in there. 7 times 3 is 21. And then I'm going to do my 5 boxes. Once you find one box, you know they're all the same, so three, four, five. And there's my chickens. So the question is, is the ratio maintained? Well, if I go from five to 40, that's times eight. And eight times three is not 26. So I'm going to write off to the side, 3 times 8 is not 26. 5 times 8 was 40. So yes, this one worked. No, this one didn't. So no, you cannot just add 5 more. 5 more being added. does not keep the ratio. And those are my dogs in the background. So it says, no, five more being added does not keep the ratio. And I can show that in both my bar model, and I can use this bar model to scale it up or scale it down. And I can show that it will not equal the 26 and 40. On number 12, it's something similar. It says, reason inductively, a student said you can add the same number to both terms of a ratio to find an equivalent ratio. Is the student correct? Well, that's just like the problem we did. It was trying to say that if we add 5 to both of these, that our ratio would stay the same, but it doesn't. So think about the cookie recipe that we talked about. 
when we need two eggs and two sticks of butter and um, the rest of the ingredients with flour and white sugar and brown sugar, if I just add another egg to that recipe, are my cookies going to taste good? And the answer to that was no. My cookies are not going to taste good if I mess up the ratio by adding one more egg. I have to add an equal amount of all the ingredients to maintain that ratio. But we need to apply it to this problem. So we're going to say no. Adding changes the ratio. And we can show this like this. Example. We use some easy number. Maybe like white paint to red paint, just like we've done in the notes leading up to this. If I have three buckets of white to four buckets of red, and I only increase each of those by one bucket, so I then have four to five, is that going to be the same color? And no, that does not work. It's not going to be the same color. It might be close, but it's not going to be the same color. Just like I can mix all those ingredients for cookies, and I'm still going to get a cookie. It's just not going to be a very good cookie if I add that extra egg. All right, you are now done with lesson one and your practice problems.